Indeed, amen. Good morning to you. How many of you made it to one of our Christmas Eve services? So good. Keep your hand up if you came to our five o'clock. You are absolutely crazy. That was so nuts. So many of you are here at our one. It was cold. It was beautiful. Our three o'clock, it rained right at the end of the three o'clock service. It was like rats jumping off a sinking ship, people <laughs> trying to find shelter. In Southern California, we have no idea what to do with rain. But the five o'clock, it was raining before you showed up and you knew it was an outdoor service. Completely nuts is what you are. So we're so grateful. The reason I wanted to say that, can we thank Bill and Chris? They're the ones who really put in the effort. They have amazing teams and they would be very quick to give them also a ton of credit. But I just want you to know it was those two who've been laboring for literally weeks getting ready for that and just again showed great flexibility to um, <laughs> pivot. Uh, we finished our five o'clock underneath the pavilion and uh, it was just a, a rich time. So we are grateful that you are here with us on this last Sunday of 2020. Some of us are just hip, hip, hooray that this year is over. I want to encourage you that God doesn't work based on our calendars. You know, just because 2020 is over, that 2021 is a skip in the park, okay? So be, be thoughtful of that. But I'm excited what we're going to get to do today and finish up our year together. My name is Todd Arnett. I'm the lead pastor here at Trinity Church. Um, this is the best way to track with us today. If you have our app, you can open that up and go to resources, sermon notes, and then you'll see where we're at. If you don't have that, that's fine. But what we're going to do today is I'm going to encourage you to be able to write some things down, whether that be literally on your phone in the notes section. If you have a physical piece of paper, we have some physical pieces of paper over here, which we have not made available throughout this pandemic. But we think this part is so important today that we really want you to be able to take advantage of that. Those of you watching at home online, you can have a way to get um, connected that way as well. And I'm going to give you some space, though, in the service today, literally to do something. So I'm just giving you that heads up now so that you can uh, kind of be ready with that. Also, another thing, by the way, when we were praying this morning for some of Larry and Karen Shoemaker's kids, some other of their kids who happen to be from Quito, Ecuador, are here today, Jeremy and Sarah McMillan. Would you guys welcome them and their kids, global workers? that are in Quito, that are home for a short time as well. So it's a good household time for Larry and Karen, for sure. Well, uh, what I want to do today, I wanted to start, you're going to have to kind of be, those of you guys home at home are going to be able to see these images. Our screens are a little more challenged with our glare, but I'll try to narrate best I can. I was going back over social media from 2020 and found some things that, to me, encapsulated the year well. Take a look at this picture. Uh, this was a throwback Thursday picture of when there was toilet paper on the shelves for people to get. You remember, it was the weirdest thing, right? I remember for going shopping for my family and coming up empty time and time again until the time I actually found rolls of toilet paper and it was like I'd won the jackpot, right? It was like the gold at the end of the rainbow. I'd found the pot of gold somewhere. So just what on in any and in, in most of our lifetimes, we can't even think that that was ever something we're going to have to face. Because I'm a child of the 80s, Lionel Richie, hello, is it me you're looking for, right? I just, uh, I couldn't help myself. This next one I thought was great related to our travel. I hope the weather is good tomorrow for my trip to Porto Backyarda. I'm getting tired of Los Living Room, okay? So uh, we can relate another one related to travel. Uh, looking at the map for some weekend travel ideas. Maybe I'll migrate to the dining room or to the bathroom or something like that. You can remember that time. This next one related to our social distancing, a social distancing outfit just arrived from Amazon, about six feet side to side, so that would work. Related to our schooling efforts, you get to homeschool, you get to homeschool, everyone gets to homeschool. So I was thinking I was loving the Oprah moment. This one is pretty good. If 2020 was a slide. <laughs> Seems pretty accurate. I like that one a lot. And then my last one for you today, I thought this was so rich. I'll be home for Christmas. I've been here all year anyway. So uh, pretty good. Just some, uh, some reminders of the year. 
2020 has most likely not been a year where you have caught yourself daydreaming about how grateful you are. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be, though. So today what I want to be is I want to be that voice in your head that's going to ask you the question, what possible good has come from the challenges, the restrictions, and even the losses from this last calendar year? I'm going to suggest that in some ways it might be too soon to really see what significant things God has been up to in a very, very hard year. Because I think honestly, often time actually exposes those realities along the way. However, there are some that you'll even be able to kind of think of today and respond to that have been hidden in the crevasses of difficulty that you've experienced this past year. And what we keep coming back to is the truth that God has told us all along. If you have a Bible, James chapter one, consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you might be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So we know these words from James. They're words that we've hearkened back to a lot in this calendar year. It doesn't make them any less true. And the reality of what I want you to do today, which is an exercise, meaning it does take some effort, it even does take some space to think, I'm going to give you the opportunity today to begin to identify the ways that God has showed up powerfully in your life. Just like that. Um, even in, in times when it's been veiled or at times when you would have never asked for, right? That's the whole point of James 1. We wouldn't necessarily have asked for these trials and challenges, but as God brings them, we actually keep seeing they're doing something. They're growing us. They're maturing us. They're giving us more and more of a, a dependence, rightly so, upon him. It's interesting, I was going back this year, 2020, when we were thinking of the end of 19, our directional team was spending a lot of time getting ready to celebrate our 40th anniversary. Trinity Church turned 40 years old in 2020. And I remember as we were developing those ideas, one of the things that we were also doing was beginning to cast vision for not only a new year, but a new decade. This was the slide from a year ago next Sunday, the first Sunday of January. And I went back and I reread that message this week. And I want to tell you some things that was really encouraging to me. We had no idea of what was going to happen the first Sunday of January. No idea what 2020 would be like for us. But as I went back and reread that message, nothing that we shared then, and we is an operative word, that vision was developed by our elders. It was developed by our pastors. It was developed by our directors all stacking hands on this direction. Nothing that we shared then has been hampered by all of the challenges that we faced this year because our vision was not connected to programs or buildings or budgets or staff. But it was a development of you, a development of us, an equipping of us, the people of God, to be and become Jesus's ambassadors to our worlds. This pandemic hasn't done anything to affect that. Variations and changes, but in no way hampered or hindered that from happening. It was incredibly encouraging to me that the vision for Trinity Church from your leadership isn't hampered by pandemics and quarantines, but is simply helping us all take part in the last directive that Jesus gave us. Now today, as we end 2020 and look back on this year, a year that none of us expected, but one that for sure will continue to ripple into parts of our lives for a long time to come. In that time in this space today, I'm gonna to give you some space to consider what good things God has been up to, what he's been at work on in your life that might've been camouflaged in lots of challenge, but God in no less was up to something. So let's begin, though, by seeing what people in the former covenant, in the Old Testament, what did they do when they really marked times of God working in powerful ways? 
when God did something to provide for them or God did something to protect them, they actually set up these stacks of rocks with the goal of not only for themselves, but even for future generations to be mindful, God showed up here. Look in your notes. Here's a definition today. Altars of remembrance are what these are called. Altars of remembrance were stacks of rocks assembled to commemorate ways that God had rescued, championed, or blessed the people of Israel so that they and future generations would remember his faithful, loyal love to them. So the word altar in the Bible, A-L-T-A-R, there's lots of different types of altars. What we often think of are the types in the former covenant where you would build an altar and make a sacrifice to God. But these altars of remembrance are different. Sacrifices weren't made. They were actually stacks or piles of rocks to remind us God did something powerfully here. I don't want to forget it. Listen to some of these biblical examples from Genesis chapter 35. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, get rid of the foreign gods you have with you and purify yourselves and change your clothes. Then come, let us go up to Bethel where we will build an altar to God who answered me in the day of my distress and who has been with me wherever I have gone. Verse six, Jacob and all the people with him came to Luz, that is Bethel in the land of Canaan. There he built an altar in the plate and called the place El Bethel. Bethel means house of God, because it was there that God revealed himself to him when he was fleeing from his brother. So Jacob is the first account that we have in scripture, in the very first book of scripture, where it says that he stacked this pile of rocks to remind himself and remind other people, God met me here. Next book, Exodus chapter 17. Moses built an altar and called it, the Lord is my banner. What a cool just name. He said, because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, <clears throat> the Lord will be at war. So a war banner was the connection against the Amalekites from generation to generation. A couple books later, the book of Joshua. This is one of my favorites, chapter four. So the Israelites did as Joshua commanded them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan. This is a Jordan River that God had miraculously parted so the people could walk through it. A smaller body of water, but similar to what their parents had walked through on the Red Sea. They walked through it to get into, Israel, into Canaan according to the number of tribes of the Israelites as the Lord had told Joshua. So meaning one stone for every tribe. And they carried them over with them to their camp where they put them down. Verse 9, Joshua set up the 12 stones that had been in the middle of the Jordan at the spot where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant had stood, and they are there to this day. Imagine as people would walk by the stack of 12 stones and realizing, number one, what this powerful significance was, God has given us a land, a nomadic group of former slaves. God has given us a land. And these stones remind us not only of that promise, but that God parted this body of water, this Jordan River, so that our fathers and mothers, our grandparents could walk through on dry ground. Just amazing symbol symbolism and, uh, and meaning in that. And then one book later, Judges chapter six. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, the Lord is peace. Another beautiful name. To this day it stands in Ophrah of the Eb Ebzerites. <clears throat> now I've known people who have actually taken these ideas to heart and they've actually done this around their home. They've walked me around the outside in their backyard and they literally have stacks of rocks and have named them. This is when God was merciful to us and spared our son. This is when God brought healing in relationships that we thought were over with. This is when God provided for us financially. We didn't know how it was gonna work out. They've done these things to commemorate the ways that God has powerfully showed up among them to either protect, deliver, to, um, to meet needs in powerful ways. So I think this is just a great practice in general, at least to do annually, 
to consider the goodness of God in the blessings, to consider the goodness of God in the mundane, and to consider the goodness of God even like this year in the midst of many challenges. And so I'm going to give you a moment of reflection, and my hope would be this, that you'll be able to maybe begin this list today. I doubt that you'll be able to finish, and that's actually part of the the point. I want you to begin a list of looking back on your stacks of rocks in 2020. Look back into this calendar year, make note, God, this is when I saw you prove yourself strong, show yourself so loving, show yourself so kind. And I want you to give just a brief explanation of what you're going to do. The reason I'm giving you enough time just to start is so that you would take time between now and the end of the year, between now and Friday, and not only finish this list, but the beautiful thing is to share it, to share it in some sort of gathering with friends or family, and just to be able to give testimony. God, look at what you've done, even in what most of us would say was the most difficult year of my life. Look at the way you showed up. I'm going to be quiet. We have some music that's going to play. If you don't have something to write on, there are some sheets and pens over here. I would encourage you, do this. Don't just think. If nothing else, pull out your phone and type in the notes section, but do begin some sort of record, and then I'll come up and share with you my list, as well as what that means for us as a church moving forward into 2021.
All right. So our hope was just to get you started. Like I said, I know you wouldn't quite be done yet. My hope is that you'll be able to develop a list. There's no golden number that has to be, but that you would take some time. You've at least started with a little bit of reflection today, but that you would be able to take some time in the course of the next few days just to go, hey, God, as I look back on 2020, these are ways I've seen your hand. So I wanted to share with you, here's my list. And I had more than four minutes than you, like you did, to uh, be able to come up with these. But I wanted to share these with you today to at least hear a little bit of my heart and the things that God's been doing in my life this last year. So first, I'm grateful for God's provision in moving Jack and Skye down from Northern California to Victorville and for their roles at High Desert Church and Mojave River Academy, where they're both working. Having my kids an hour away versus seven hours away, gold. I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful for God providing for Aaliyah and Kendi, my two middle daughters, to be in person in college this year and all the growth that they've experienced there. It was just a year that they've needed to be there and I'm so grateful for God giving them the opportunities they've had. I'm grateful for God's development in Ellie as she's taken seriously her grades and academic success in a new way this year. I'm grateful for that. She's in the eighth grade and she's figuring some stuff out and making it her own, which I love. I'm grateful for God providing Joanna with a job and coworkers that she really enjoys. She began a job a year ago and just is loving it. It's been really a great blessing to us. I'm grateful for God's provision for, of Trinity's elders who have worked so well together as a board in both the leadership of and the listening to Trinity Church. I'm so absolutely grateful for that. This group of men that you have elected to these roles are doing such a great job working well together uh, listening to the people of Trinity Church and all these home group visits and the ones you heard Dan share about today that we'll still be doing, as well as leading and praying well uh, over this church. So I'm very grateful for them. I'm grateful for God's provision of Trinity's pastors, directors, administrative team, facilities team, productions team, communications team. And I could go on about our children's ministries, our youth ministries, our small group ministries, and I'll forget some in the middle of that. But all of these teams in a year that have never had to function this way, how that they have demonstrated such extraordinary amounts of agility and flexibility in this year that has kept handing them lemons and they keep making lemonade. I'm just so grateful for our teams that have just kept finding ways to minister to you, to serve you, to wanna be a place where you can bring people to, whether it be on lawn or online. And I'm just so grateful for just their attitudes of just bending where they've needed to. I'm grateful for God's protection that though I have spent some dark nights in God's shed of discipline this past year, I've been learning lessons about myself and dependence upon him that cannot be learned at such a soul level in any other way. It's been painful, but I know that he's developing character in me that is needed and necessary to be the husband, the father, the friend, and the pastor that he intends for me to be. I'm grateful for that. It is not a thing when we look at the ways and times that God disciplines us. It's not a thing that we initially say, yes, God, please. But in the midst of it, we read in Hebrews chapter 12, God disciplines those he loves. And he's growing in us something he, we can't learn any other way. I'm so very, very grateful for God's provision of my wife, Joanna, and for her strength and perspective for me all throughout this year plus of crisis and criticism. I'm grateful for God's sovereign directing the word that I chose. In the last couple of years, I've kind of chosen a word at the beginning of the year just to kind of focus on. And my word this year before the year even started was spirit reliant. I had no idea what an incredibly uh, significant and timely word that would be. And my need for God's strength and wisdom has never been greater. And yet his provision has always been there and been available to me. Finally, I'm grateful for God's direction when we began looking at John chapter 1 for our Christmas series this last month, and that we'll plan on continuing teaching our way through the rest of John's gospel in 2021. So I'd want to say be sure to join us next week as we kick off a brand new series called Beckon, the God who invites you close. And we'll start looking more at um, the words of uh, John chapter 1 as we dive in. We're excited to begin that with you. So 
no matter how many you were able to identify this morning, no matter how many you were able to begin identifying and saying, God, even in the midst of a lot of challenge, even in the midst of even at times heartache, even in the midst of deep loss, you have been consistent, you have been faithful, you are good. And I wanna acknowledge that, I wanna give testimony to that goodness. And so I just encourage you, wherever you started on that list today, continue and be willing and ready to share it. That's what we're gonna do with my family on New Year's Eve is we're gonna gather and share our list and just say, this is how we see God at work and his hand over us in this last year. So I wanna close my time and I wanna pray this morning for Trinity Church. I wanna pray for and thanking God for what he's been doing in and among us this year. But I also wanna pray and ask God for his leadership, his strength and his direction as we begin new 2021 together. Let's pray. Father, we are a people today gathered in the cold and gathered because we love this opportunity to as your people to be seen and to see. But more important than even what happens horizontally, God, is that we get to focus on you vertically. We get to set aside some things in our lives and some pressures and some uh, concerns, even distractions for just a few moments today and be preoccupied with you. And that is such a good and noble thing for us to give our time to. Thank you for those watching online as well who have set aside time today to be able to say, God, I want to listen. I want to track with you. I want to be open to your leadership in my life. God, we look back over a year that has just been fraught. I appreciate the way we could laugh at the beginning of our time together today because it's either laugh or cry, it seems like, in so many ways. And so we're grateful that in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the difficulties, in the midst of losses that we've experienced, God, you continue to be faithful. You continue to be at work. It's not as though any of 2020 caught you by surprise. And so we are grateful that you are sovereignly in control. We are grateful that you are absolutely extravagantly in love with us. And so would we as your people keep recognizing both of those attributes, especially that you have not fallen asleep, you are not distracted and, and failing to pay attention. And God, you couldn't love us more. And so help us to keep looking for the ways that you have been up to something, up to your good ends in our lives. And so we pray, God, as we move forward into 2021, God, we pray that you would bring things to this body, that you would do a work among us for such a time as this. Help us, God, to be a people who are deeply concerned of those that you have supernaturally, strategically placed in our worlds. God, concerned enough to pray for them, concerned enough to love them well, concerned enough to invite them to come and know, come and see this great God who has been so good to us. God, we pray not only of what goes on locally, but we pray globally. We thank you, God, for our global workers. We thank you for, in the midst of so many challenges, how they've continued to look to you They've continued to find their hope, their strength, you being their source every step of the way. And so God, as we continue to uh, lift them up in prayer, we pray they would be encouraged. Some for uh, unexpected reasons, God, in the pandemic have even been here stateside. And we as a people are grateful for the opportunity to connect and to be able to relate to them face to face. So God, we just trust you. That's the position that we're in. Give us a growing faith. Give us a deeper and deeper trust. And God, would you be pleased with the way that we live and the way that we love in 2021? We love you and we pray in the great name of Jesus. Amen.